So I will give some brief motivation why we decided to develop Helsinki city traffic model. Uh, then we'll formulate the problem that um, we tackle. Uh, then we'll show um, the workflow that we developed, uh, discuss a little bit which kind of input and validation data that we have. Uh, then I will show the results of simulation and some future steps and final remarks. Uh, so basically now uh, we have a research group in Finland which work on a project called artificial intelligence for urban low emission autonomous traffic. The idea of this project is that we work together with city authorities, some transportation agencies of Finland, and also a bunch of companies which produce software for autonomous cars, uh, with the goal of reducing CO2 emission, which is related to traffic within the city. Uh, because actually Helsinki has so-called uh, action plan, uh, and they want to, uh, Helsinki to become carbon neutral by 2035. And of course, emissions from the city traffic constitute a uh, large part of the overall emissions. Uh, more precisely, uh, in frames of this project, we develop reinforcement learning algorithms uh, for controlling different traffic agents uh, within the city. Uh, we may have different types of agents. Of course, they are private vehicles. We have one group which is working on like low level control of vehicles, like uh, optimizing driving policies of autonomous vehicles, like the set of accelerations and brakes and so on. Uh, we have uh, problems which are related to, for example, sustainable routing when we need to dispatch a set of vehicles. Uh, and uh, agents may be not only vehicles, for example, uh, we have a problem of optimizing electric charging stations locations when an agent actually is a station itself. Well-known problem also is optimizing traffic light controlling schemes. Uh, uh, the nature of these problems is usually multi-objective uh, because we need both to minimize CO2 emissions but also uh, to think about, for example, quality of service related measures like time to destinations, some safety measures for autonomous driving and so on. Uh, the common thing in these problems is that uh, uh, it is reinforcement learning problem and then we have agents which operates within the environments and our goal is to train the policy uh, foreign agents to select optimal actions. Uh, of course, our environment here is a uh, city traffic model and we want uh, that ag uh, agent behaves optimally in this environment. Uh, also using this environment, we can calculate rewards for different agents and then uh, get better policies uh, in the end. Uh, this is the main reason why we um, need this Helsinki traffic model because uh, we want our environment to be as much realistic as possible uh, to train like meaningful policies for the agents because we hope that in the future uh, they will be used uh, by different stakeholders of the project. Uh, going to the motivation for current work. Uh, we have one main source of demand data uh, this is the model uh, which was developed by Finnish transportation agency called HSL. Uh, this is a classical four-step transportation model uh, and actually it covers quite a large area as you can see here. So Helsinki is somewhere there, uh, but you see that the input data are for almost 2000 traffic assignment zones which cover uh, a lot of different municipalities within the Finland, like uh, here. Uh, and uh, one uh, launch of this model uh, for one hour uh, took around uh, six hours. Of course, you understand that for training reinforcement learning models, uh, it is quite a significant time. Uh, so uh, we uh, need uh, to 
um, estimate the demand for smaller areas. Uh, here I show the area with which we are working at the moment. Uh, it is traffic assignment zone, uh, which are inside Helsinki municipality, uh, around 400 traffic assignment zones. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, first goal is to infer the demand and to create the model for smaller area, of course, uh, but also uh, we would like to create some uh, sort of computational workflow uh, to infer this demand and to create instances of model for arbitrary core areas because different models in frames of the project operates on different spatial scales uh, and then uh, we need something uh, to create from this data uh, additional like data sets uh, for the uh, different algorithms. Uh, more precisely, uh, it looks like follows. Uh, so we have this extended area, like these 2000 traffic assignment zones, and we want to infer the demand for this smaller area. Uh, our first uh, assumption was that we can just use submetrics of initial OD matrix for that purpose, but when we tried to do that, uh, for morning rush hour, uh, we got the result that actually in this submatrix, this submatrix does not contain a sufficient amount of overall trips, uh, as you can see here. So the problem is that we need in to include not only this kind of trips, uh, which start and uh, finish inside the core area, but also different uh, kinds of trips, uh, which originate or finish uh, outside core area. Uh, this one out in, uh, in out, uh, and also uh, these trips which start and end outside core area, but uh, for which a uh, part of the path is presented here. Uh, that was the first problem. So we want, of course, to estimate the OD matrix for smaller area, uh, and we want to include in this OD matrix uh, all trips uh, which uh, somehow cross this core area. Uh, second problem uh, we identified uh, before, uh, after that, uh, because usually when you work with origin destination matrices um, uh, to instantiate certain trips, uh, you need also to select uh, starting and ending edge for the trip. Uh, and uh, with random assignment, you just pick them randomly from the set of edges of uh, traffic assignment zones, like origin or destination. Uh, but when we tried to do that, uh, we realized that actually this procedure applied to core origin destination matrix, uh, it uh, reduces the consistency between a core simulation and the extended one. And the main goal here is that uh, the instance of core simulation that we have, it should be uh, consistent to a large extent to uh, the original data. Uh, so, uh, this is first desired properties of what we uh, want as a result. Uh, second one is uh, that uh, as uh, extended simulation uh, takes uh, a lot of time, uh, we would like to launch it only once uh, and then we would like uh, to have an opportunity to launch different instances of core simulation like with some, some randomness. Uh, and this is second desired property. Uh, this is uh, the whole workflow uh, that we developed for that. Uh, we start with origin destination matrix for extended area. Uh, in the beginning, we can just copy uh, the submatrix for in-in trips because we already have. Uh, for the rest, uh, we perform a SOMA simulation for extended area once. For this step, we use random edge assignment. Uh, we record vehicle trajectories as an output, and from this output, we produce uh, two different outputs. Uh, first of all, as we know uh, where vehicles come uh, to core area and come from core area, we may identify uh, indices of traffic assignment zones within core area, uh, uh, like uh, the rest of the OD matrix here. And uh, these two inputs uh, are used uh, to create uh, resulting OD matrix for core area. Um, and the second output is that we also record so-called border edge. So this is our extended area, uh, this is our uh, core area, and we record the indices of edges uh, for the vehicles which were used to enter core area or to uh, exit core area. Um, and uh, 
finally, uh, we use uh, this OD matrix uh, together with recorded border edges uh, in starting and ending edge assignment algorithm that we use instead of uh, random assignment of the edges. Uh, the algorithm itself uh, is uh, uh, quite simple. Uh, what we want, uh, we want to uh, still um, uh, have some randomness in assignment, but we also want to exploit the information from the extended simulation, which roads were used by the vehicles to come into core area. So you see that for inner trips, we still have random assignments, but for other type of trips, we use also information about recorded uh, border edges to instantiate the simulation. Uh, the whole workflow uh, was uh, looks like that. Uh, this is like more technical <laughs> representation of it. Uh, code and manual are available at GitHub. Uh, we have four uh, steps here, uh, data preprocessing, extended simulation, uh, reduction process and launch of reduced simulation. Uh, and uh, basically, um, a road network was uh, imported from OpenStreetMap. Uh, we did some manual post-processing uh, because we identified uh, some deadlocks uh, after that. Uh, we also checked after the number of teleports and it seems that the uh, road layout from OpenStreetMap was sufficiently good. Uh, let's go to the experimental study. I said already that we have 2,000 traffic assignment zone in large area, around 400 in core area. Uh, simulation was done for morning rush hour. Uh, input data is this extracted road networks and large OD matrix. And for validation, we use data from traffic counting stations uh, located within Helsinki city area. Uh, they are shown on this map. Uh, and uh, we divide them into two types. Uh, these magenta ones I will call border because they are located on the border of core area, uh, mostly uh, on the roads uh, which um, go uh, into the city and inner are uh, somewhere uh, like in the center of this area. In total, uh, we have only 15 traffic counting stations. Unfortunately, we don't have 1,000 like in Kyoto, but still, uh, that's good that we have uh, that. Uh, and uh, mainly, we have uh, two goals, like to check um, the values of validation metric. Uh, but the main goal was uh, to show that this workflow uh, gives uh, the instances of core simulation, which are uh, consistent with the extended one. Uh, this goal uh, also was to measure the level of randomness uh, in core simulations. Uh, here, is, uh, here are validation metrics, so how to use this table. Uh, we compare what we have for extended area and what we have for core area for different sets of traffic counting stations, border, inner or all. Uh, we use two different validation metrics. First one is mean absolute percentage error of traffic counts, which are then averaged by traffic counting stations in a certain set. Uh, and also person difference uh, of sums of traffic counts also for these sets of stations. Um, first conclusion from this table is that actually uh, the core area uh, simulation is consistent with the extended one. You can see that uh, there is not more than 2% difference. Uh, from the, these values of this metric, uh, we may say that even this large OD matrix uh, it reproduces to some extent uh, the level of like traffic intensity because uh, the difference here is less than 20% uh, for border stations less than 10%. Uh, but of course, we still have sufficiently high values of uh, um, this validation metric. Uh, uh, we may observe that actually for border stations, uh, the values of uh, MAPI is 10% uh, uh, lower than for inner stations, I think that corresponds to the nature of input data because we have a really OD matrix for a large, large area and uh, 
uh, it uh, describes uh, better the coarse grained patterns of traffic flows between different municipalities uh, of Finland uh, than the detailed traffic flows within the city itself. Uh, also, uh, we tried to understand if this edge assignment algorithm was useful and we compared the results also with um, traffic assignment zones, which we like with the results from default SUMA uh, procedure. Uh, and it seems that uh, for border stations it is uh, useful. It reduces error by around 10%. Uh, finally, uh, we would like to measure uh, if we use this edge assignment algorithm uh, after reduction, uh, can we have random instances of core simulation and uh, if uh, this uh, influences the error. So we measured coefficient of variation. Uh, here you can see the distribution of this coefficient separately for border and inner traffic counting stations. Uh, and uh, we have the values of the coefficient for border stations up to 5%, for inner stations uh, up to 10%. Uh, this is explained by the fact that actually for border stations, uh, this uh, um, thing that we fix border edge, uh, it influences, uh, of course, more than for inner one. Uh, and uh, uh, error uh, is uh, still... Um, uh, mm, uh, not uh, sufficiently uh, worse, uh, like this coefficient of variation for these 10 runs. Uh, so going to conclusion, uh, here we uh, created the workflow for reduction of demand. Uh, we showed that uh, uh, somehow it is correct, uh, it produces the results consistent with large simulation, and we can use it to uh, instantiate a different random instance of these core simulations which are still consistent uh, with the extended one. Uh, I hope that uh, this code and this approach may be reused not only in frame of our project for different algorithms but maybe for other case studies too. And uh, mm, future steps mm, of course mostly are related to increasing the validation accuracy uh, of the resulted models. Uh, we have several ideas about that. First of all, uh, <coughs> when we plot that on the map, like uh, we can see here uh, that a green one is when error is less than average, actually green are reproduced uh, significantly better than what I showed be before. And you see uh, there is some uh, spatial relation, so this part is reproduced good, and uh, we have certain traffic counting stations that are reproduced not uh, really good, so we want to check them uh, more uh, deep. A uh, second idea came from yesterday Q&A session. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we want to try now the road sampler to use OD matrices together with uh, uh, values from traffic counting stations. Uh, also, one idea was to try different methods of OD calibration, so uh, of tuning OD matrix by the values of traffic counts, because I'm aware of the existence of this method, and it could be also uh, interesting to try. And uh, maybe some SUMA parameters tuning, because uh, we mostly used uh, all the default values, uh, values here. So I think that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention.